He's a former security engineer at Intuit, the big software company, but he left and filed a whistleblower claim with the Securities and Exchange Commission, alleging the company did not take the needed security measures against cyber crooks, crooks regarding TurboTax, its a big online tax preparation product. McDougal claims Intuit management refused to take action because it might hurt the bottom line. Intuit says his allocations, allegations are, quote, flat out wrong. He joins us now from San Diego. Shane, welcome. Good to have you with us. You maintain that the company Intuit, your former employer, put its bottom line, its profits, ahead of customer security. How exactly did it profit from that? Well, you know, I, I can't get into too many specifics um, just because of the nature of the filing. But, um, you know, uh, Intuit actually gets paid every time a filing is uh, successfully made to the IRS system. And I guess the question I would ask is, uh, so it, they get paid when uh, the filing is successfully uh, filed with the U.S. government. If the account... Who pays them? Uh, the, the IRS pays them for a successfully well, actually, filed return? Yeah, so uh, they will get a chunk, uh, basically a, a refund transfer. They get a fee uh, for every um, return that's successfully filed. I guess the question I would ask them uh, is how do they account for uh, refund transfers that are declined by the IRS? In, uh, explain what that means. That, that feels a little technical to me. In, in other words, how do they account for it in their bookkeeping uh, for, for refunds that they receive but that are, are that, that where the return is ultimately found to be fraudulent or flawed? Yeah, well, he, so here's the thing. Um, and, you know, and I, I've read some of their statements where they're saying, you know, we don't get paid for uh, returns that are rejected. And that's actually true. But rejected means, a couple, means something different than what most people think. Mm -hmm. So a user will go online, type in their information, and hit send. Mm -hmm. When they hit send, that return goes to the IRS's system. Mm -hmm. The IRS's system will break down, go through the, the tax return very quickly, and it e will either accept it or it will reject it. And that's what we call rejection, right? And it will give mm -hmm. you a rejection code. So, you know, we've already seen the Social Security mm -hmm. number, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. But if it is not rejected at that point, I believe it's at that point, they book it as revenue. Mm -hmm. So if it successfully makes it through that, that part and is not rejected, at that point, it's booked mm -hmm. as revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, if the refund transfer is declined by the IRS... Uh, I guess that's the question mm -hmm. of how, that needs to be asked about how that is accounted for. Let me, uh, let me ask you a question uh, that is uh, germane here and I think important for the viewers to know. You are a former employee of Intuit. Uh, did you leave there right. voluntarily or were you terminated? No, I left voluntarily. I mean, look, there were so many crazy things going on there that, you know, I in good conscience could not stay. Uh, and I'll give you an example of just how big of a problem it is. Amen, we had in. a... Eamon, I want yeah. Eamon to get hey. a question in, because he's our yeah. sort of uh, cybersecurity expert. Eamon? Hey, hey, Shane, it's Eamon Javers here in Washington. Uh, so real quick, one of the things that we should put on the table here is you have filed a whistleblower complaint here on this issue. As a whistleblower, uh, you stand to get a cut of any uh, settlement that the government receives. Do you have any sense of how big of a settlement you're predicting here and what your personal take on that would be? Look, quite frankly, I, I expect to get nothing. You know, I'm already over $5,000 in the hole from legal f fees in two years. You know, I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this to help protect the American taxpayer and the millions of people who are taken advantage, and not just by Intuit, but by the entire industry. You know, um, it's very odd. If you look at their response, you know, they say, well, if we crack down on fraud, it's just going to go somewhere else. Well, to me, that's a good thing. I mean, I can't think of any other business where losing fraud is considered a bad thing. So, yes, it might go to the competitors, but the competitors will be profiting from fraud. So, you know, um, and what do you know, I guess Shane, business about works differently th from what, when, I, when I was in it. Yeah, go ahead. Shane, what do you know about who's committing the fraud here? Do you have any visibility into that end? I mean, you're alleging that people are able to sure. get into these tax returns, file them, and then collect the, the benefits from the IRS fraudulently. Who's collecting that money? Where's it going? What do you know about that? Well, the fraudsters, I mean, sure, so there's two types of fraud, right? There's what we call account takeover, and that's where somebody, say, has used the same password on another site 
or where you know the hackers will brute force the passwords. That's called a take a, account takeover, mm -hmm. and that's really where Intuit focuses its right. efforts. Now, there's also something called SURF, stolen mm -hmm. identity refund fraud, and that's where somebody doesn't even it doesn't brute force their way into account. They just create another account and file it using and using someone's be using someone's uh, social security number that they've. Purloined or, or gotten access to some way. Is that yeah, basically correct. it? And All right. We, uh, that's correct. Shane, and I'm, I mean, here, hold on, hold on. Quick, I, you know, and quick, here's something quick, odd. Please. I mean, this is, okay. Go ahead. Finish so this, your, this finish is your thought. This is something that's very odd, you know. You would think that a system like Intuit would restrict the use of a social security number. One person uses it, that's it. But that's not the case. As many people can come in and create accounts, or at least mm -hmm. up until recently, using the same social security number as, I mean, that already existed in the system. And I'll give you a real quick uh, we, idea of just how bad this is. Very we had quickly, a senior please. vice president. Yeah, we had a senior vice president that addressed the security group, and she's told us that she won't use TurboTax online because she doesn't trust the security. That should make people ask some very serious questions. All right, Shane, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, we appreciate it as we keep an eye on the markets. We have to move on uh, for that. Uh, Power Lunch did reach out to Intuit. We invited the CEO on to join us today. The company uh, declined. That invitation uh, remains open. Uh, here is a statement. Uh, we asked them for a statement. They referred us to a press release from February 13th of this year where we refu they refuted uh, the allegations by Mr. McDougal and another former employee, Robert Lee. Uh, the allegations are flat out wrong and based on their complete misunderstanding of the facts and a total mischaracterization of our business.